Hello everyone, Charles Watts here, the Arsenal correspondent at Goal, joining you on Wednesday, halfway through the opening week of the international break. The games are going to be starting sooner, so at least there will be some football for us to talk about and watch. Fingers crossed everyone from Arsenal who is away with their national teams comes back on skates. I think that's what we all want. We'll all be keeping our eyes on over the next sort of week or so as they play in their various matches across the world. Um... I'm not going to spend too much time talking about anything like that today. I wanted to do today's video on kind of reviewing Arsenal's season so far. Now, I've wrote a piece that's gone out on goal this morning. I've I've socialed it on my social channels. It's on Twitter and on my Facebook page as well. So if you at the end of this video, if you want to go and have a look at it, you can find it right there. I go through lots of different things, kind of analysing the season so far. And I wanted to... I just thought, uh, you know what, I'm going to talk about that as well in today's video because I think it's an interesting thing and I want to see your views on it, see if you agree with me or disagree with me and um, let me know below in the comments on um, any of that who you think if you don't agree with what I'm saying who you think should get some of these but I've sort of split it up in the piece I've wrote that's been on goal today I've split it up into 10 different sections and looked at like the best goal best performance star star man so far best signing biggest disappointment cause for concern things like that and I want to sort of go through it talk a little bit more about it in these videos because I think this time first international break season it's a good time to kind of take stock and let's face it at the moment it's all going very well isn't it Arsenal sitting top of the Premier League at this point in the season so there's plenty of positives to talk about there's definitely some cause for concern as well and a couple of things uh, which I'll talk about but yeah I um I started out obviously the best player so far now this was a really tough one to talk about and it's like uh, to decide on it's like, who is Arsenal's best player there's been so many good performances and you know, really notable performances from Granit Xhaka throughout the season so far. Gabriel Jesus as well. I mean, wow, what a signing, what an impact he's made. But I gave this one to William Saliba. Um, and the reason why is obviously he's been brilliant defensively, no doubt about it. And But also he's chipped him with a couple of really you know key goals at the other end of the pitch as well. But I just think with Saliba, the way he's adapted to the Premier League, the way he's come in, such a young player and... He had the most unbelievable expectation levels placed on his shoulders when he came back to th th this season. Everyone has been waiting years to see what Saliba's all about at Arsenal. Everyone's been talking about him. It's just constant, constant. Since he first signed, since he first got sent out on loan, then the second loan, then the third loan. It's all about when are we going to see William Saliba at Arsenal. That expectation level has just grown bigger and bigger and bigger. And then finally, this was going to be the year we saw him. It was almost felt, and I remember speaking to people about this, um, other Arsenal journalists about this before the season started and it just felt almost impossible for him to live up to the hype we knew he was good we knew he was great we've seen that in France but it still felt almost impossible because he was almost put on this pedestal people comparing him to Van Dyke and things like that and you just think how is a kid still a kid how is he going to live up to that sort of hype and under that sort of spotlight and <laughs> he just thought it was impossible and yet he's come in and he's pretty much surpassed those expectations it should be magnificent from start to finish every game it, the way he reads the game is uh the way he plays with the ball at his feet his recovery his pace um the calmness he shows on the ball and like i said he chips in with a couple of goals at the other end of the pitch so that's why of all the good performances this season i feel like so far at this stage of the season william Saliba just gets my gets it and gets a nod for me for best player of the season he also gets best goal of the season for me as well because again there's been a few diff decent um contenders for this one not least fabio vieira who we saw against brentford the other day um martin odegaard the second goal at bournemouth that team move just brilliant great finish from odegaard as well gabriel jesus's debut goal against leicester with no backlift whatsoever dennis burkamp like type finish there but i just thought saliba's at bournemouth for me the fact he was a center back obviously the fact it was his wrong for edge of the box the curling finish right into the top corner it was just such a brilliant goal and um so that's the one I've given So uh, as goal of the season so far for me. Um, so Saliba gets best player and he gets goal of the season so far from me. Let me know what you guys think always um, on those two. I'm sure some of you will agree with me, some of you will disagree with me. Let me know in the comment below. Um, best signing of the season so far. I think this one's pretty easy, isn't it? I mean, <laughs> Zinchenko's been great when he's played. I mean, he's been injured a little bit too much. with a bit of a concern, but he's been great when he's played. Marquinhos has looked exciting in the little, tiny little bit we've seen of him so far in the Europa League. Fabio Vieira, again, 
brilliant goal against Brentford on his first start. Fantastic. But, I mean, there's just no no competition for this one, is there? Best signing so far this season, Gabriel Jesus. What an impact he's made. What a player he is. What transformation he has made. You know, I mean, Arsenal are a completely different team with him leading the attack than they have been in the last couple of years. The fluency, the pace, the movement... And it all stems from him, the pressing, it all stems from him in the centre there. And he's just been an absolute breath of fresh air. What a signing he's been, what a player. He's been £45 million. I know he only had a year left on his contract, so £45 million felt like a little bit much. So, and I could understand people saying that, but I mean, right now, £45 million looks like an absolute bargain for a player of that sort of quality who has had that big an impact on the side. So of all of the things I went through on that list, I have to say... Um, Best signing was without a doubt the uh, the easiest one so far. Best performance was another one that I, I looked at, and again, in this has been loads of good performances. The Leicester the Leicester game, the attacking way they played was brilliant. The start against Crystal Palace in that first half an hour. To be fair, the Man United defeat I thought Arsenal were excellent in that game against Man United. Um, and they played really really well, and there's just been there's been lots of good performances. But I think I and I gave it to the Brentford game at the weekend just because I think for 90 minutes on a whole for the whole for the whole performance how comfortable they were how how much they limited Brentford in terms of li- Brentford causing any sort of danger I think Ramsdale only had one save to make the way they dealt with the sort of aerial threat that le- the Brentford provided with the long throws into the box and then the way they attacked as well and the goals that they scored I just felt for the full performance wise that is the that is the 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 height that Arsenal have hit so far this season was that game against Brentford. I thought they were fantastic from start to finish. Absolutely dominant at what is a very difficult ground to play at and to win at. And uh, and they did it with absolute ease. Just I remember as um as full-time whistle went, the Brentford fans were sort of walking past me in the press box and one of them just said to the other one, totally outclassed. And um and they were. It was just, you know, Arsenal outclassed them from start to finish. It was a real sort of marker there, I thought, that performance. And um so that's comfortably for me the best performance of the season so far and one to really take heart from I think um biggest disappointment was an interesting one for me and there's been a few disappointments really mainly injuries and things like that but I think the biggest disappointment for me was the Man United game not the performance because I thought the Man United performance the performance against Man United was Excellent. The best we've seen at Old Trafford for a long, long time from Arsenal. Normally, Arsenal go up to Old Trafford, stink the place out, lose horrendously, and it's just proper miserable. But it was the absolute opposite this time. They went there, they played with character, they played with a personality, they played really, really well, but they lost. And that was the disappointing thing because it was a game they really should have won. And they just, and it was there for the taking for them. And I, just, I was so disappointed coming out of that ground. Not the usual sense of disappointment after leaving Old Trafford, but the sense of absolutely let United off the hook there because that was a game that was there to be won obviously gave away the goal in the first half but then to get level and at that point they were so dominant Arsenal had started the second half so well and you know once that equaliser went in the game was absolutely there for the taking and they just lost their heads it was the first time this season the only time perhaps this season we've really seen a bit of inexperience from Arsenal there they just lost their head from even the celebration of Saka's goal, Saka wanted to go straight back to the halfway line. And it's like there was, it wasn't just five minutes left. There was still half an hour to go. You didn't need to rush. You just needed to take your time, enjoy the moment, get back and then keep playing the way you'd been playing at the start of that second half. And, and Arsenal would have won that game. But instead, they just lost their heads. Even Mikel Arteta did as well with the substitutions at 2-1. Again, there was still lots of time. They didn't need to make all those subs at that point. And everyone just lost their heads a little bit. And that's why it was just, there was a, a sense of disappointment I think after that one that it just hadn't it was there for the taking and Arsenal would fluff their lines a little bit so that was my disappointment of the season so far uh, there's plenty of other ones I've gone through I mean I, I don't want to give it all away because you can go and read it and you know it's uh, it's gone down well looking at the comments on social media and um, it seems to be a piece that has struck a chord with a lot of people but one more I wanted to do was I did sort of surprise package. I did the biggest positive of the season so far, but there's also could do better. And I gave this to Bukaya Saka and I almost feel bad doing it because Saka, he's got four assists and one goal in seven Premier League games this season. I think only Kevin De Bruyne has got more assists than him this season. He's got more assists than any other player in the Arsenal squad. And yet I'm still saying could do better. It's like that feels a little bit harsh. Five key goal involvements in seven Premier League games. But... There's no doubt that he has not hit the heights yet that we've seen the last two seasons. So maybe that's because 
maybe that's a positive because that just means that the rest of the team are, are doing what they should be doing and the sole reliance on performing isn't just falling on Saka's shoulders which let's face it it has done really for the last couple of years but now everything doesn't have to go through Saka anymore because everyone else is playing well Odegaard's playing well when he's not when he's there in the number 10 position Gabriel Jesus is doing what he does Martinelli's been fantastic over on the other flank so maybe the fact that Saka's not perhaps hit the heights that we've seen is just purely because he's not having to see as much of the ball because everyone else is working and pl- and performing well which hasn't always been the case but it does feel still when you've watched him that he's not quite there yet this season and that maybe still just feeling a little bit leggy but the signs in the last few games I think have been good I mean he got two assists against Brentford he got the goal against Man United as well um in the previous game so he and that sort of ended a long run without a goal in open play and he's had chances like against Brentford he was unlucky with a shot that was saved I remember I think was it the Villa game or the Fulham game where he missed that kind of open goal that had come to him at the back post so he could easily be sitting in now on three or four goals this season and um, and then it'd be really hard to sort of put any sort of criticism on him. In. And, and to be fair, I'm not really criticising him because I think that's a bit harsh. I just feel out of everyone this season, if there's one player who perhaps could do a little bit better or we could ask a little bit more from, it, it would be Bukai Saka. And, um, I'm sure a lot of you are going to disagree with me on that and think it is a little bit harsh, but um, it was re- it's just really tough. I think it says how well Arsenal have been doing so far this season that it's really tough to find someone who you can look, sort of look at and say, you know what, you should be doing a little bit more. You're not quite pulling your weight. And I just don't think there's anyone in, that, in the squad who you could say that about. But um, if there is some, maybe someone who's not quite hit the form that we've seen so far or so far in the last couple of seasons, it pot- potentially is him. But... I mean, that's nitpicking. It really is nitpicking because he's still playing very, very well and he's still contributing uh, in the final third, which is exactly what he's in the team to do. Like I said, there's other stuff on there. I talk about um, cause for concern maybe for the rest of the season. I I sort of assess Mikel Arteta's job so far. Uh, Surprise package, like I said, and and other other things in there. So please do head over to my social channels now if you want to read more of that and find out exactly what I've gone for in all my my listings or um, head over to goal.com. It's right there on the homepage right now. You'll find it very, very easily. Okay, so that was about it. Something a little bit different for today's video. tomorrow i'll try and do something else we'll have a look see if there's any news between now and then to talk about if not i'll try and discuss something else to look at a big talking point i'll try and do a live as well during the next couple of weeks or so have a bit of an arsenal debate it's been a while since i've done one of those always good to get you guys involved and have a bit of a debate about anything you want to talk about so keep your eyes peeled for that that will be there might be something i'll do tomorrow as well actually we'll uh, we'll have a look uh, as the day progresses until then everyone have a very good rest of the day enjoy your wednesday and i'll speak to you very very soon